Hey guys, Zom Fox here, and today we're going to be doing the Week 5 Power Rankings for the USFL's 2022 season, and, well, this is pretty, it, it's, it's an interesting ranking this time, because the rankings, you'll see, I'm not going to spoil that much, well, I guess it's put a same. For those of you who saw my last week one, I'm just going to change the reasonings, but overall, I actually have, like, all my power rankings the same for the first time, which is pretty insane. So, without further ado, let's get started and see why. Coming in at number 8 are the Pittsburgh Maulers again. Um, here's just the point differential and points scored. I, I mean, there's literally nothing to say. This team still can't win a game, and they have the lowest points scored by a wide margin by, like, 18, and their point differential is now minus 63. They are getting cream. They are losing by over 15 pretty much every game. And the worst part is their point differential is literally 41 points worse than the next team. I don't want to really waste my breath on this team. They're just bad. Like, the other teams that aren't high, like, pretty simply, like, if you're doing a tier list and you had, like, A through F, and you didn't have E, like, you know, you just had, like, you know, normal grades A, B, C, D, and F, this team would be an F, and then every other team would be C or above. This team is just that bad. They are awful. You win your... Total point differential through four weeks is minus 63. That means you're terrible. They're just, they're so bad. They are the worst team in the league, and it's literally, of all the spots aside from number one, the easiest to pick so far pretty much week from week. Coming in at number seven again are the Tampa Bay Bandits. So, the Tampa Bay Bandits don't change because, once again, you look at the point differential, total points scored, they're the second to worst team in both categories. They have the second least points scored, and they have the second turn to worst turnover differential. Their team just isn't really good enough, especially considering they played it back the the not superstar starting quarterback. Because if you look at that Birmingham Tampa Bay Bandits game, the fact is that they just kind of got pwned. Like it's not like they totally should have. You know, it's just. They lost to Alex Magoo, who's literally the backup quarterback. They literally lost to the backup quarterback of the Birmingham Stallions because Jamar Smith has pretty much become the starter unless I don't know they go back on it. But it's just they lost to the backup. Their point differential stuff is terrible. They lost, and I had them at 7 before. I'm just keep them at 7 again. Maybe next week they'll get a win, but as for now, even though they are like 2-2, two and two, I'm still keeping them here. So, yeah. Coming in at number 6 are the Houston Gamblers. The Gamblers are staying above the Tampa Bay Bandits pretty much for the same reason they have been. Their offense is fourth in... Ter well, their total points scored is fourth in the league. Their point differential is better by a wide margin. But once again, it just comes down to the fact that they do have the sacks leader and they do have the tackles leader and the kickoff touchback leader. So all those stats and their punt return average is the best in the league. And their turnovers are the best in the league. So... Because of that, I'm going to keep them above them just because they're really, really solid overall at this as they just seem to be getting the job done pretty much, like, a lot. Um, They're getting the job done, at least in those stats. Offensively, it's still a big question mark, but, I mean, they're, they're going to be here is how I look at it. They're just their solid team. They should have won that game, and it's really why I put it here. The reason that they're not above the number 5 team is, if you look at this, Kyle Slaughter threw three interceptions, and they literally still lost and only put up 16 points in this game. They put 16 points against a quarterback who threw three interceptions. Now, I understand that Slaughter, you know, had a lot of other yards, which we'll talk about later, but you lost to a quarterback who threw three interceptions, and your team put up 16 points. That's legitimately sad like are you serious really you couldn't just you know get more I mean the main reason that their turnover margin is so good is literally because of this game and they're still you know just they didn't get the job done and because of that I feel like they have to be where they are Coming in at number five are the Michigan Panthers. The Michigan Panthers are number five, and yeah, I know it's shocking to a lot of people because of mainly two things. Number one, in terms of total points scored, they are six, which is bad. But in point differential, they're still plus 12. A one in three team having a plus 12 point differential is pretty insane. And the proof was in this one. 
pretty much the team lost on a really bad decision at the very end of the game, which I have uh, linked to a video at the top right of the video if you want to see pretty much an in-depth analysis at that. But to put it simply, they were one bad decision away from beating the Philadelphia Stars. Though, I'm not putting them above the Stars. And my reasoning is just... Because, you know, usually I will say, oh, well, you know, a team just, you know, they should have shouldn't have won or something like that. And because of that, oh, they got to go down. No, the reason is just their offense is just, I mean, they were better. But, dude, Shea Patterson threw three interceptions. His QPR was a 42.6. I mean, that that's not going to get the job done. Even though they rushed the ball phenomenally, like they were awesome on the ground overall. I mean, dude, Corbin and Patterson just torched that defense. I mean, if you watch that video, they literally, without either of their biggest rushes of the night, still both averaged over five yards of carry, and in total, the team rushed for 250 yards. They still lost, but I don't think they deserve to be below any of the teams below them, because they still lead the league in points allowed, which, is when you give up over, like, 20 points, and you still lead it, it's because they're good, and if you look at it, they're still leading it by literally 11, so they're still leading it by a wide margin. Their third down percentage is still the best in the league, and that's one of the most important analytical stats is how often you get that third down. And they're also leading that by a pretty wide margin. They're leading that by, like, 4%. And then now, thanks to their last couple games and the Generals' most recent game, the rushing yards per game leader is now the Michigan Panthers. So they're leading in some of these pretty important stats, and because of that, I'm going to keep them at number 5. Coming in at number four, again, is the Philadelphia Stars. Uh, I mean, this one is another one where I don't have that much to talk about. The main reason they're here is just the fact that they have a quarterback who was, you know, a backup and Case Hookus, and he's playing pretty well for the most part. Once again, he had a pretty decent stat line. I mean, it wasn't like it was this world breaker stat line, but... His 73.3 completion percentage for 190 yards on 30 attempts with two touchdowns, one pick is still really solid. And they did win this game, but... And the main thing is, though, the fact that it was against the Panthers. They put up 26 points against a team that had allowed, like, 19 points or something like that. Like, their defense had allowed almost nothing, and they ended up putting 26 total. And I'm pretty sure it was all from actual offense. I mean, two touchdowns. I mean, a good amount of it was on offense, and that's pretty solid. But, I mean, another reason, as you can see, is that they do have the interception leader right now with four interceptions in Channing's dribbling. He literally has the most interceptions at four, so it's pretty solid. The team, they're good, and they definitely have a shot to make the playoffs because of the division they're in, so yeah. Coming in at number three, and this one was really hard to determine who would actually get this. But, you know, I said at the beginning of the video that none of them changed, but... One, there was one change. Number three is the New Jersey Generals. They're moving down one spot. Let me start by saying this. Their quarterback play has proved that it can work. You had two quarterbacks play. They combined for 83.3% on 24 attempts for 200 yards and a touchdown. DeAndre Johnson had one complete pass for, and he had 98 yards and a touchdown. Luis Prez went 11 for 14 with 100 yards. But here's why they go down. Against the very inferior Maulers team, they only won by 8. They won 21-13. They lost me my spread pick because it was so obvious that they should beat this team by more than 9, and they ended up winning by just 8. So they're essentially a couple of bad mistakes away from losing this game. And not only a couple of bad mistakes, their kicker is awful. Nick Rose still being on a USFL roster, not just, I mean, no, on a football roster, was amazing. I haven't checked to see if he's gotten cut yet, but let me just put it to you this way. He should be cut. Field goal-wise, he is averaging 30% on 10 attempts. He's attempted 10 field goals and has only made 3 of them. Now, I know he's, like, perfect from the extra point, but, like, bro, your field goal kicker can't kick field goals at all. Like, this isn't like, you know, some other kickers who haven't kicked that many attempts. No, he's attempted 10, and he's only made 3. But, mainly, it's just their running game wasn't the same. They're not really leading in any stat, and they're not second in, like, every stat. So, I'm going to move them down one spot, 
Because number two definitely showed they are above them. And naturally, I think it's pretty obvious who number two is. And this team plays that team next week. So that's going to be a good game. Coming in at number two are the New Orleans Breakers. Even though he at overall wasn't the best, Kyle Slaughter threw the first 400-yard game of the season. He wasn't great, but he still, you know, 400 yards is a uh, pretty, pretty, pretty impressive. Um, Ellis had 100 yards in the ground again. They had 200-yard receivers. They had another 80-yard receiver. Their offense showed up, but you know those are those are really nice. But you go to the stats page on the USFL or Fox Sports, and you see the passing yards leader, Kyle Slaughter, New Orleans. The rushing yards leader, Jordan Ellis, New Orleans. Sal Canella, the receiving yards leader, New Orleans. Okay, that's pretty solid, right? Total points is now Kyle Slaughter. The punt net average, so like net average when you punt the ball, is Matt White now of New Orleans. Passing yards per game leader, the New Orleans Breakers. The yards per game leaders, the New Orleans Breakers. So, I mean, they're leading the league in like so many stats. And then to make it better are these two. And these two stats are why they're above the Generals. Only behind the Panthers and points allowed is the Breakers. And they are a decent, like, you know, seven off third place. So that's pretty good. But then they're also second in third down percentage at 42.6, which is over four points higher than number three, which in both those instances of who's below are the Generals. They have overtaken the Generals at a lot of stats, and because of that, I'm keeping them up. I know they have some weaknesses. Their turnovers are definitely something that I'm looking at as a huge question mark, but you're leading in that many stats. You're leading in, like, every single stat, pretty much. And for the team stats, you're, like, second in some of them. I love the Generals' 2QB system, and I genuinely hope that they end up being better than the Breakers because I think they're funner to watch, or more fun to watch, but dude... You can't argue this. For how much I want, I've talked about this team being overrated. Right now, I can definitely buy into them being the second best team in the league. Until they maybe lose to the Generals next week. But for now, I'm keeping them at number two. Coming in at number one are the Birmingham Stallions. Whoa, I'm stunned. Okay, let's be real here. Um, I'm just gonna here. Here's the score. Of oh, I'm not gonna show you the score. I'm just gonna you know tell you the same things again. The leaders in Total points scored is 99, and then in point differential, they are second to plus 24. And by the way, for more fire for the New Orleans being higher, here is um, New Orleans being first and second in both the stats. So essentially, Birmingham is above the Breakers because they have not lost. That is why. If you don't lose, I can't really put you lower, especially because they did beat the Breakers in Week 3. So that's literally all I have to say. They beat the Breakers in Week 3, and they're... Total point scored is still number one in the league in point difference. Like that, yada, yada, yada. This team is good. This team is great. This team is fun. This team is now one with two different starting quarterbacks. Well, they won with a starting quarterback who got hurt for a bench, and the bench won. Then the bench quarterback who became the starter won two, and now they have the original starter, and he won one. So they're still undefeated, and until they lose, it's to the point now where they have to be number one every single week, even if they only win by one point. They are 4-0. Congrats to Stallions, you're number one. It's literally the easiest pick aside from the Mars being dead last. So, yeah. And so, this is it for the Week 5 Power Rankings in the USFL. Overall, there wasn't really that much to change because a lot of the same issues I had with teams kept going. But the Breakers definitely did show that they deserve to be pushed up a little bit higher. So, overall, the Breakers-Generals matchup is going to be one of the most intriguing matchups of the season. And it's almost as intriguing as the Stallions Breakers match was in week three when it was between the two undefeated teams. As now you have two teams who are vying for that second best team in the league title going against each other. That's going to be a really great game. And so I guess we're just going to see how that goes. This has been Zomfox. If you enjoy this content and want to be notified as soon as I upload videos, subscribe and hit the bell. And as always, have a great night.